Thank you both very much for talking with us. Thanks for having us. I would like to tell you that I cussed like a grown man in this movie. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just got all into it. What was it like for you to come back? Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. I really enjoyed this whole franchise so much, and mm -hmm. Lee Winnell, who has written this beautiful <laughs> character, no, it's true. <laughs> I filled her in, but... <laughs> well, at this but, stage, I don't know where you start and the character stops. Like, well, to me, Elise and Lynn are one and the same person, so it's, it's great to have her step into the role because she knows this role better than any of us. I'm not as nice as Elise. <laughs> sure you are. Sure you are. <laughs> well, maybe. No, but it really has been... Uh, it's been the most fun character I've ever been able to evolve and to, you know, to... To, to have continue. I don't think I've ever been a part of anything like that. Even so. that, that that tan you had in Something About Mary wasn't more fun than this. <laughs> that was a pretty deep tan. That was great. Well, it was different. Yeah. It was different. It's different. This really is, a, this explores, I think, also uh, an emotionality of the character, of other people, of uh, fear, I think, is a very powerful emotion that uh, Elise is allowed to fear her, feel herself in this particular episode, but also... Uh, supports and other people. We don't, uh, to be serious for a minute, that's something we often, when someone's afraid, you, everybody kind of runs mm -hmm. the other way because, like, we don't want to be near that. And Elise is one of these people who's, she f can face anything. And she's been through so much, but this time around is really, really personal. It literally hits close to home. Yes. We, we, we go back to her childhood home. Yeah. Lee created a backstory <laughs> which I had not invented. I mean, which is really interesting because as, as an actress, uh, I always try and create a backstory, which usually the audience never knows anything about because it's personal uh, backstory that supports the present of your character in the film. And I did when I, I always saw Elise as a single, as a single child, like no family. And it was fascinating. <laughs> well, really. And then you I find thought, out oh my, my backstory God, clashes <laughs> with your backstory. Right, right, right. But it was really interesting because there's an element of having to support who you've created in the first the first episode, which is which is the last episode now, and having to support that all the way so you still end up with the same person. Mm. And um, it was really, it was a bit of a challenge because I really didn't know, you know, I didn't see myself with family. But I also really realized the aspect of, of what happens in this family is very important to supporting who Elise does become. So it's a beautiful, uh, cur you know, sort of this curve and cycle that Lee created for her. Much to your credit, I thought, not only is it a great horror film, not not only are like the scares are good and I was just like petrified, but it is just solid storytelling too. Like if you have not seen any Insidious film, you can still watch this one and have the blank scare. <laughs> the blank scare out of you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for saying that. Um, that was certainly my intention was to make a film that uh, could work as a standalone movie. You know, I don't want people to have to have a master's degree in Insidious to go and enjoy the film. And, you know, with some of these franchises and cinematic universes these days, sometimes you do feel like you need a, uh, a master's degree in the world to really enjoy it. And, and I wanted it to exist on its own. And, and uh, I wanted to delve into Lynn's character a lot more. I mean, she's kind of been a supporting actor throughout the other films. And with this film, I wanted her to really take the spotlight, you know, be front and center. And Specs, though, is also... Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, He's yeah. front and center, too. We see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we see different sides of Specs this time around. Yeah, I know. I mean, that was... It, the interesting thing about writing sequels is you've, you've got to try to give the audiences more but different. You know, you, you want to give them a slightly expanded world but without retreading the same old ground. So that was interesting, coming up with new things for Specs and Tucker to do. And they're kind of, you know, Lynn's bumbling sidekicks, so they could just keep carrying on that routine. Um... Uh, but in this film, I just wanted to go a little bit deeper. He wanted than that. romance. Romance, that's right. <laughs> when it got, when you're on set, though, is there any moment when you guys are legitimately just horrified and scared and just not for the reasons you're thinking? Yeah. <laughs> mainly, ma yeah, mainly when the assistant director yeah. is saying, uh, "We've got five minutes yeah. to shoot this scene. We're losing the light." That's the most Rick terrifying Osaka thing. Rick Osaka be sitting there like this while we're trying to, uh, yeah. to, to make our hit our marks. It's a different kind of fear. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it is it, it is a genuine fear. But we haven't really had any ghostly experiences on any of the films. It's funny because the Insidious movies themselves are, um, you know, so terrifying. They're dealing with these demons. But the set of the movie is so light because we all have such a familial relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know Lynn so well, and she's such a great presence on the set. We've worked with a lot of the same crew before. 
So you couldn't get a more positive, less demonic, less ghostly place than the set of an Insidious film. It's mostly people laughing. And then all of a sudden, two seconds before we roll, the laughter stops and it's like, there's someone in here. Right now, there's someone in here. Cut! <laughs> okay, yeah, so yeah. you were saying about the time that your horse kicked you off? Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's great. It's, it's very familial. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. We want to know, what would you have asked? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And as always, for more videos like this, hit the MIH TV logo right here. And for the next awesome video, click right there.